At one in the afternoon, went all night long. There was a different band on stage the whole time. That's great. About halfway through, we had a little auction, and we raised ten thousand dollars for that lady. We're here with Baron uh, from Kicking Cancer. Pretty exciting to have you here. Excited for everything that you do. Thank you. Uh, very uh, impressed with everything. I mean, uh, you're always doing something for someone, and your heart is huge. Thank and, you. And then that just really, I don't know, that fits the heart of Advantage, and we want to support you. And I really would like you just to kind of tell us a little bit about how it started, what's going on, and what's what's coming up in the future. Well, I will do my best to give you the short version. The short version. <laughs> yeah, you can go for a long time. But... <laughs> the, 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 the short version is it was about... A little about seven years ago, my sister had battled through breast cancer, lives in Arizona, and I just wanted to find some way to help her out. So a bunch of my friends at Costco, we're at Costco, so a bunch of my friends at Costco, we decided to go up to Canby and do this thing called the Wire Dash, and they do a three mile trail run away from the cart, sorry for the uh -huh. so back in that back, that pasture, and they put little obstacles along the way. Uh -huh. So there's 12 obstacles, a little three mile trail run. The very last thing they do is they bring a backhoe and they dig this big trench, they fill with water, so it's just a big huge mud <laughs> pit. Um, but 42 of my friends came to support my sister with her battle with cancer. Kind of just a celebration of her victory. And after she flew home, I called her and I said, you know, we could support another person. And it was actually a coworker of mine at Costco who just thought she had cancer on oh, both breasts. Wow. So we decided to do a Spartan race, which is similar but a lot harder. And it just kind of snowballed from there, Dan. It's like, well, maybe we could help one more person and one more person. Wow. And by the end of 2018, I said, maybe we should actually make an organization. So we, we've made a profit from year one, and the money always goes to local people with whatever cancer they're battling through. So we just help one more person and one yeah. more person and one more person. What an amazing story. Yeah. It was really cool. I tried to condense that down for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, kicking I'm, cancer, um, you're helping people that have cancer. How do you get in touch with you? How do, how do you find these people? Well, for the first year and a half, almost two years, um, God kind of led them to me. You know, so I would just literally find somebody or someone would come along and I'd go, oh, that's really something we should do. Once we formed the organization and made it into an official nonprofit, we got a board of directors. Well, the board basically said, you know, just because Baron feels bad for somebody doesn't mean it's a good way to, it's not a very uh, accountable system. Yeah. And so we actually have a spot on our website. It's, it's kicking-cancer.org is our website. And you can actually click request help. And so that's where the submissions come in from now. And what's intriguing about that is I get this request from somebody in Georgia. And my first thought is, I'm amazed that somebody in Georgia found our website. Yeah. And then they click the button because that person's sister lived in Salem. Oh, really? And they oh, said, wow. can you help my sister? Well, once I read the sister's story, she's a single mom, she's all by herself here in Salem. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult for us to help her because she's all by herself. Yeah. And so I kind of didn't really write it off, but we sent some flowers to that person. And then about four months later, I get a separate request from Northern California for the exact same person. Wow. And a third request from Northern California, different, different <laughs> per, for the exact same person. Wow. And at some point I had to go, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that person is Roxette. Wow. Who you've met. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, myself and, and the team that's here filming, Yeah, we all we got vans and trucks and we put this stuff in there and we drove up to Portland so that she can, that it was a something Palooza called. Thrift of Palooza. Thrift of Palooza. So she took all of her stuff and she sold it. She And she was so excited that we didn't even have to take vans up to bring anything back. She yeah. could fit it all in her little tiny car. Yeah, that was that was really well. She did. Amazing. She did tell me after you guys helped her out. She made enough money at that event. It paid two months of rent. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so awesome. So so when we get the request, I have to sit and, and read it and go, is this a legitimate person that we can help? Yeah. Because 
you know, I was telling you before we started filming, we don't sit here with millions of dollars just to right. make a wish kind of a situation. We want to step in with you and find a way to help you help yourself, mm -hmm. kind of like I did with my sister. And with her, I'm like, I really feel bad because she had stage three lung cancer, single yeah. mom, 10 year old kid, yeah. but there's no one here to help me help her. Right. But once we started really talking to her, she says, well, I got to accept that such a lose. I'm like, oh, so you do want to help yourself. Yeah. All we need is a van. I might know something. <laughs> we might and that's how you set up the picture, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the cool thing about everybody here is I just put it out to the team. And he was like, well, yeah, well, definitely. When do we have to be there? What, what time? Where do we go? And we just showed up. And we, um, we loaded a bunch of things into her um into our vans a bunch of her things and she's she took a lot of stuff out of her out of her uh, apartment yeah um but i mean that's amazing but it was all stuff that was just i always say one man's junk is another man's treasure right. so it was just junk for her but yeah. a chance to go sell it someplace right. you know and you know you said something really interesting danny because uh, I see this more than once, we had, this would have been uh, almost four years ago, and it was a request from somebody in Lebanon, mm. <clears throat> so it's not close, but her husband was a drummer in a band, a local band here, and she was battling blood cancer. Oh, wow. And we started to put a campaign together, and then he had a massive heart attack and died. Oh, wow. So now the woman with the cancer has to deal with the cancer, and the husband passed away. Wow. But every band that knew him stepped up and said, you know what, we're just gonna waive our cover fee and we're gonna have this massive concert. It started at one in the afternoon, went all <laughs> night long, it was a different band on stage the whole time. That's great. About halfway through, we had a little auction and we raised $10,000 wow. for that lady. And wow. what I didn't realize was she had her house almost paid off. And we raised enough money for her to pay off her house. Wow. That is amazing. And all the stress of him dying yeah. and her dealing with the cancer. And now she is fully productive. She's got a job in Albany. She's the gas relations at a hotel. Because it kind of got her through that hump of yeah. now what do I do? Yeah. You know? Well, I love, I love what you do. I love how you do this. Um, you create a scenario where people help themselves yeah. and then also those the loved ones come around and help them as well yeah and it just so it shows that person so much support I mean, just by seeing everybody helping out and and coming together to do an event like that now i have a question do you have an application that someone goes through or how does that work yeah so when they go to our website and they click that button yeah um, there's a little application, it's a small one, but what we also want to make sure that no one could ever accuse getting cancer of being biased one right. way or the other, right? Sure. So there's no question about your religion, your race, your age, yeah. your in, none of that. There's two questions. W what's the need? Mm -hmm. Is it financial? Is it just emotional? What's the need? Yeah. And secondarily, who do you have that can help us? Are you just asking for money? or is there a support system? And so I get this application that comes back and then I just, I read it and if I mm -hmm. immediately know that this is not a viable situation, then I reply. But if it is, then it goes to a committee. Okay. And if there's, we haven't had it yet, but if there's five requests, then the committee will go, let's really make a determination. Now, fortunately, we've been able to actually, we've been able to fulfill every request that's come in. Wow. But I know the day will come when we'll have so many requests yeah. Yep. that we have to have a process to go, how do we filter this down to who we can actually help most right. effectively? We'll talk about some of the things that are coming up. Talk about some of the fundraisers. Oh. I mean, you and I were talking about there's something in July that sounds like a blast. <clears throat> there's stuff in June. I mean, there's just, you got things <clears throat> planned. Um, it sounds like all summer long. All summer long. And yeah. just really cool, fun things to get people involved and, and to get the word out. Well, it, it, so within getting cancer, we have really two legs. We've got the support we're talking about. We've got the education piece, which I have a radio show. That's a whole other conversation. <clears throat> but then we also have a way to, what I basically say, we self-fund our organization so that the donor's money helps with the programs. Mm -hmm. And we put on a festival every year, and it starts in June. We have a, 
of a charity golf tournament in McDerry. Yeah. And then later in June this year, this is brand new this year, um, we were approached by World Beat to oh, do really yeah so world beat has this multicultural event yeah. every year at the riverfront park yeah and they always do a competitive dragon boat race and they want to do a charity dragon boat race where various charities in town would race each other uh-huh. so we were actually selected as one of those charities well then they said it would be great if we could find a sponsor so that the money to rent these dragon boats is covered by a sponsor and this amazing guy named Danny <laughs> <laughs> stepped up. So you you are actually the global sponsor for Worldbeat. Wow. You you will be the main recognition for Worldbeat because your donation has covered the cost of the boats, which means that Liberty House, Child Abuse Prevention, and United Way and Feeding Cancer and then World Beat's gonna do a boat to raise money for the Ukraine and the efforts over there. Mm-hmm. These four boats will race each other. But what's really exciting to me is I know that you and I will be paddling on that boat together. <laughs> yeah, but we, but we'll be paddling oh, away. I, I've been trying to figure out how to train for that. I'm not sure. I don't know, sure. know how to train. I, I resistance some, bands. That's I've seen resistance. some things. <laughs> I looked it up on YouTube and it's like, Okay, I've got one of those little things. Maybe I can yeah. figure out how to train for that. But that's the end of June. Then the middle of July, we, with July we're having a second charity charity golf tournament in Staten. Yeah. We're also having a charity softball game. You know, I just talked about this. Yeah. Uh, the policemen and the firemen have a softball game between each other. And there's two, there's two prizes. Who wins the game? But which one of those two organizations raised the most money to then raise uh-huh. the check? Right. Yeah. Um, last year, police won the game on the very last hit. It was a walkout. <laughs> and tell me, tell me again. Oh, dude, the, you, you got all the way to the end. All so so we had decided five runs and we changed sides. So the firemen go ahead five to zero. And what made me laugh is as we're changing sides, I walked past home plate. There was a there's something on home plate. I wasn't sure what it was. Uh-huh. As the first police officer got up to hit the ball, the fireman put a box of donuts <laughs> on home plate. That's fun. <laughs> fun little rivalry. <clears throat> but the policemen chipped away at the lead, so the bottom of the last inning, the firemen are ahead. Uh, they'll see their head 12 to 11. First policeman gets on base, first base. The next one hits a triple to drive that run in, so that's a tie score. Yeah. And the only female on either team was a police officer, and she hits a single between first and second to drive in the wing run. <laughs> so the Salem police beat the Salem fire. The fire would like revenge this year. Yes, yeah, so this, this is going to be this is going to be a big deal. This yeah, it'll be it. So that's the yeah. middle of July, and then in August we do our third charity golf tournament in Corvallis. And you and I are talking about yeah. your company wanting to kind of move that direction. So yeah. that tournament is actually being sponsored by your company. Yeah, that'll, that'll be and fun. That one's we're, we're going to have, we'll have some people that want to want to be there and, yeah. and want to play in it. And I want to be there. <clears throat> I'm not much of a golfer, but. There's always a <laughs> Well, the, the great thing for us. Who in the cameraman right there? There's, he's, your, golf, he's there's, excited. there's your golfer. Are, right are you excited? <laughs> <there? laughs> no, no, no. This Tim's excited, so we're. Good. Yeah. Well, you know, in any organization, I mean, with your company, there are there are some what I call fixed costs, administrative costs. Mm-hmm. You know, for us, um, we we pay a pretty good chunk for insurance, and we have mm-hmm. an attorney that we if we need him, we yeah. pay the attorney, and we have an accountant. All those basic costs that any business yeah. has, we self fund those costs through this festival. So that as we go out to donors and potential grant people, mm-hmm. we're like, oh, these are our programs. We need you to help us fund the programs because wow. we will take care of our administrative Yeah, costs. that's 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 really cool now. 100% of those dollars <clears throat> go actually where they should go, yeah. helping people. Yeah, and I know that cool. we just passed five years, and over those five years, we've been only gift to the, to the Salem surrounding areas, we've only gift back just about $100,000. Wow. To, to people like Roxanne, yeah. Yeah. who just need some help. But the, the, the really cool thing is you're not just going in and saying, here's a pile of money. You're saying, okay, we're going to create an event that's going to give you money and again like i like i said before i want to reiterate how important that is to see people rally around you oh, when, you're, when you're when you're in this 
devastated place or this difficult place to see everybody come around. I mean, that's just, that's just gotta be, well, it gotta be tears. You, just, you <laughs> saw the look on the Roxanne's yeah. face, just the gratitude yeah. for you guys showed yeah. to help. And I've seen that over and over. Yeah. And, and that is just so gratifying to realize that here's this person, <clears throat> they're, they're scared, they don't have to do. Right. Where do I go next? And oh, some yeah, organization that they may or may not know about can come in and say, well, we're not just gonna have you like, we will help you create right. something. And the most successful one raised $26,000. Yeah, that's amazing. That's oh, really cool. It's very gratifying. Yeah, for oh. sure. And uh, just kudos to you for putting this together. I mean, oh, thank you. Just, that, that's amazing. I mean, to start it and just keep, hey, we should do this, we should do that. And coming up with the ideas that you come up with, it's just crazy. It's just fun Hey, stuff. let's do this. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> well, and you know, like with any business, and I'm sure you see this over your time, some ideas work, yep. some ideas don't. Right. And if they don't, then you learn from it and then you create another way yeah. to do it. You know, early on, I told our board, I said, we don't have any failures. We have learning experiences. Right. Well, you know, they're like, well, it's only research. Right? It's only research. <laughs> it's yeah. Not, it's it's only never a failure. And, and I told our board, I said, within our company, within our business, R&D stands for rip off and duplicate. <laughs> like, let's not reinvent the wheel. If someone's doing something, let's massage it and yeah. make it a little bit different, but let's just take their idea and duplicate yeah. it. And sure. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, well, what did we learn from that? Let's do it a little bit better next time. And we just keep it forward. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Trial and error, but it's working out. Yeah. Sure. Anything else that you want to touch on or... Uh, yeah, it's just the other thing that's amazing to me is I do not, I did not have a background in nonprofit. So for years, I owned a restaurant in Kaiser. I know how for profit businesses work. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly your business model, but I got a pretty good idea of mm -hmm. how it probably flows down. And so when I started kicking cancer, I was trying to create a business model similar to that. And that's not how nonprofits work, they work different than that. And I've had to learn so much about creating websites sure. and but all I knew in my heart was there's got to be a way to get the word out that we can slow this disease down. I mean, every year it's worse and worse and worse. And I had this idea for a radio show. I have no, oh, yeah. no background in radio, but I had an idea for it. Well, we're just starting our third year with our radio show. Wow. And because of how we throw it to podcasts, I get some data back. So what I do know is that our radio message has reached 43 countries. Really? Yeah. Wow. We, we, have, we have at least one download in 43 countries. Wow. Um, we have three downloads on mainland China. Really? We have, we have 150 downloads in France. Oh, wow. And, and so I just really feel like God is blessing me to take this platform to a bigger level mm -hmm. and inspire hope globally yeah. that there, what you're going through, you're not alone, and there are solutions to this horrible, horrible disease. Yeah. And that, that's the big thing, hope. You know, that's, you know, said they're in a position where you feel hopeless. Like exactly. Whether, whether you're a family member feeling hopeless for someone or whether you're actually a person that has cancer feeling hopeless. Yeah. I mean, I remember when, when you came on the radio show, I had no idea about your connection to cancer. Yeah. Um, and then just to listen to you open up about your own family situation. Yeah. But you're not alone. No. There's more Dannys out there that went yeah. through that exact same thing. Yeah. And if someone can take inspiration from your story, that's what we hope for. Yeah. What, what, um, what radio station are you? We're on, we're on KSLM. Okay. So it's 1220 AM, 104.3 FM. And when? Uh, it airs every Saturday at 9 AM. Okay. But if you miss it, just go to Kicking Cancer Cares on any podcast service and 200 podcasts are now out there as available as well. Okay. So it's on podcast. Starting probably two weeks from now, we're going to add a YouTube channel. Oh, so you can either listen to it wow. or you can watch it. We've got, we just brought a new staff member on and they're going to come into the station with us and they're going to videotape us doing the show. Yeah, and that's we'll great. On YouTube too. So. That's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought, who's going to want to watch me in a station? <laughs> but they're like, you'd be surprised, how many? Yeah. Hey. So we're going to add, sure. we're going to add a YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, and you, well. put a you put faces with voices and everything. That's, exactly. No, that's really cool because there, there'll be a lot of people that want to watch. 
Because the emotion that comes out is is different over video than it is over oh. radio. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I know when I was telling my story, you know, I, I got choked up and I'm looking at you guys and you, I mean, we're getting choked up. What's tears tears and tears are flowing and I'm just going, oh man, this is, this is getting rough. Yeah. <laughs> but that emotion, uh, over, uh, the camera oh, yeah. videos is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. What I do know, and this is probably the, the number that keeps driving me is the American Cancer Society does an amazing job with their data, and so I can actually get a lot of data from their website. So if I can go back to when I started this to now, just brand new cases, mm -hmm. 14,000 Americans have gotten cancer since I started doing this. Wow. Those are 14,000 brand new cases wow. of cancer, um, which doesn't count the ones that already had cancer. Yeah. You know? Um, and there's a gentleman that they... There's a term for it, but, but they basically look at statistical models mm -hmm. and then predict the future. So he says, based on statistical models, if we don't take prevention more seriously in 20 years, every other American will have cancer. Wow. Every uh, other American will have cancer. That's incredible. So the real heart of our message is that we're trying to be proactive to prevent while still supporting those going through the battle. Yeah. I could have started with that and stopped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was really good. Yeah. That's really good. Well, I appreciate your support financially and, you know, just being there with us all the way through. I really, really appreciate it a lot. It was really fun being at the at the game. Oh, yeah. The basketball, the basketball game. game. Yeah. And then seeing the survivors yeah, come out. And, and yeah, the, the, the cancer survivors come out there. It was really, it, it meant a lot. It was heartfelt. Yeah. And again, that's that's part of that support message yeah. for us is that so so you go to, you know, let's say you go to the Moda Center and, and the Blazers have a cancer night, which may or may not happen. But you're just one in the crowd. Yeah. But the Blazers probably aren't going to say, well, all the survivors come no. to court. No. And I, I thought that was that was really amazing. Yeah. Everybody standing down there yeah, at a Blazer game. I would think it fill up the court, but that would be really. Cool. Oh, I'm sure. That would be really cool to. But when something. when Jason liked my idea, yeah. and I said all I want is I just let's just do a game to honor survivors, and then just give me a few minutes during halftime, and he said yes, and then they just start coming out of the crowd, and you just know now that's my neighbor, right? Right, right. That's my neighbor. Didn't know they were a kid. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and and I enjoyed the game too. It was fun watching the basketball game, the Capitals. It was. Um, Nah, a lot of people probably still don't know that we have a basketball team no. in St. Louis. It's uh, what, AAA? Uh, or what, is, what do they call it? They, they, they say it's the equivalent to the G League in Europe. Oh, yeah. Right? right. So it's yeah. it's not the NBA play like one step down from the NBA, but it's still yeah. really good basketball well, to watch. Fun. It's fun it's to watch. watch yeah. you know? And in June, the baseball league here, they have Cancer Awareness Weekend. So there's four baseball games that oh, they wow. have. Yeah, and Friday, two games, Saturday, two games, Sunday. Once again, survivors that watch this, they can come yeah. and throw out the first pitch for free. Wow. Just come throw a pitch out at a baseball game. Wow, that's, so, that's amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of support in this community to really recognize those that have gone through that horrible yeah. long battle. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks again. I Thank really you. appreciate all your yeah. support, Danny. Thank you. Yeah.